Hi, my name is Chris Dixon. This is Founder Stories. Today we have Jeff Clavier, the um, founder of SoftTech VC and a well-known uh, uh, Silicon Valley-based uh, angel investor, or seed investor, I should say. Yep. Um, and so you just, um, so thanks for being here. Um, thanks for having me. It's good uh, to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Um, so you just uh, uh, are announcing a new fund. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Sure. So we just announced that we had wrapped up the fundraising of our fund three at 55 million, which is essentially more than what we had originally expected to raise. So we're glad that we were both oversubscribed and over the limit. And uh, we're now sort of investing uh, pretty much in the same type of companies with uh, larger investments. So now 400K is our average, um, will go down to 250, potentially will go up to a million. The big thing for us now is ownership. So we try and buy five to 10% of the companies we invest in. We always co-invest, we'll gladly invest with you and a bunch of folks in New York or in Silicon Valley to just create a very strong foundation for the startups we, uh, we put money in. And for us, you know, from a geography standpoint, um, we'll do 80% in the Valley. For us, New York is sort of a suburb of mm -hmm. Silicon Valley, so we'll do 10% of the fund. And then we'll sort of look at opportunities on the west coast of the US mostly, uh, and maybe we'll do one or two sort of mm -hmm. European ones. And it'll be all internet kind of stuff, or just tech? It's mostly consumer internet. Okay. Um, you know, roughly we'll do 60 investments in this fund. Uh, we've already done 23. Uh, the goal for us roughly is oh, to- so you've done 23 out of this fund already? Yeah, or? okay. Because we started, uh, we announced on, on TechCrunch that uh, we had done the first close see, back in December of okay. 2010. We essentially, um, because the, the whole background of SoftTech is, I started this thing, you know, seven and a half years ago. Yeah, yeah. On so let's talk own. about like how did you get in? You've been doing so. I sort of think of you as a guy like you and maybe Ron Conway are, are some of the only people that have been doing the seed investing kind of before it was cool. Yeah, um, I met you. You were nice enough to meet with me back in two thousand four. Uh, you know, and blog yeah. about site advisor. Thank you for that. Yeah. that was nice. Um, uh, but uh, you've been doing it for how long? I mean, when did you start? And how'd you get into it? So, so quick, quick background. Um, so. French born, raised, educated, did a startup in financial services that after five years was acquired by Reuters. Um, I was at that time the CTO and so I scaled you know, the product teams and development teams and eventually got into venture by accident like everyone else in 2000, moved to the Valley 11 years ago mm -hmm. um, to be the, the, the general partner of a London based fund. Did that for four years and when the next generation of consumer internet companies like Sad Advisor showed up uh, mid, you know, early 2004, mid 2004, I was stunned by the fact that they no longer needed $5 million, half a million was enough and so on and so forth. And there was just no fund strategy that would allow you to actually invest in those and make sense out of the economics. So I dropped out, uh, decided to um, start my own thing, SoftTech. And for three and a half years, I sort of built my deal flow and, and sort of my footprint in Silicon Valley by doing Android investments. Mm -hmm. And so did one, two, eight, 10, 20, and eventually was very lucky to get into a bunch of great deals, uh, like Mint uh, was one of my sort of uh, uh, clear winners. Uh, but there was what, what were some of you, like in the, back then, what were you some of your uh, Truvio uh, was uh, one of my first investments. That was, that I'm sorry, that was a video? Truvio was video search. The AOL bot, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. AOL bought uh, within 11 months, mm -hmm. and it was a 17x uh, you know, 11 month, so pretty good. Uh, Mint uh, was in Kaboodle, I was in Userplane, I was, which was bought by AOL as well. Mm -hmm. um, AOL bought three companies, so we like AOL. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially, that gave me two things. One is, uh, you know, quite a bit of cash back, so we could yeah. actually reinvest it. But also, uh, at that time, I was trying really to hustle my way into deals, because I'm not from here, right? I, I didn't do Stanford, Harvard, or I didn't do a startup in the US. So it was a sort of a challenge to get a French dude, you know, yeah. to talk to entrepreneurs saying, yeah, I can help you. Yeah. Um, and it actually worked out really well because even though I was not a well-known VC, I was still a VC and I could help entrepreneurs with, you know, their financing and figure out how to uh, structure the investment, how to look at term sheets, how to pitch and so on and so forth. And so slowly but surely I sort of built that initial presence in the Valley and, and the blog helped uh, because mm -hmm. it was also not as big as Fred or Brad Feld, but I was still a pretty large sort of, uh, VC blogger. And so all, all that sort of was a perfect, perfect storm which allowed me to really sort of get into the deals I wanted. Mm -hmm. And eventually uh, in um, mid-2007 when at that time... I think that's one of the things people don't really get about seed investing is that it's I, would, I, I don't know what you think, but I think mm -hmm. it's a, a huge part of its access as opposed yeah. to 
as opposed to picking people. Mm -hmm. I think the sort of, when I first started, I had this sort of maybe naive view that, definitely naive view that, you know, you would, it was all about sort of just, you know, deciding this was the better company than this one or something. Yeah. Uh, in fact, you mentioned Mint. Mint was one I tried to invest in, but at the time, you know, didn't have, uh, I guess, enough credibility and mm -hmm. wasn't given an allocation. You know, like that's an example, Sorry. you know, no, 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 so <laughs> I'll hold it against you. But I'm just saying as an example, like that mm -hmm. was, a, to me, was an interesting learning experience because I was like, okay, wait, this is about, a lot of this is about proving to entrepreneurs that, that you're actually going to be helpful. Yeah, right. and I think it's it's really sort of changed a little bit around 2006, if you go back in history, because if you remember some of the early rounds that you and I sort of either got into or saw happening, there was a lot of filler, so people were not, like, uh, the money of mm -hmm. sorts, mm -hmm. and all those guys sort of uh, have completely disappeared because now if you can't prove the value, yeah. even you, Chris Dixon, or yeah. even I, Jeff Clavier, we have to prove every day yeah. to entrepreneurs why they should let us in. And so, yes, it's about access. And if you have perfect access, see, meaning you see pretty much everything, which only run, so it really does, um, you can then make a determination as to which one you, yeah. want, you want to get into and to, uh, and to back. So coming back to the history of, um, of SoftTech, in 2007, I had the opportunity to raise uh, SoftTech 2, which was a $15 million fund, 1.5. And why 15? Well, because that's what I could raise very, very quickly. So SoftTech 2 was raised in literally eight weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was sort of, a, once again, a, a great combo of a bunch of people wanting to do something at the early stage to figure out what that meant. And so I did SoftTech 2. I invested in 65 companies on my own uh, with that fund over three and a half years. And I think I, I perfected the model of what I think a macro VC should be. And basically, that's what Fund3 is. And mm -hmm. so for us, the strategy with Fund3 is larger ownership, um, still doing only 20 investments a year, being very involved in those companies and having a lot of capital available to us to invest at least in one or two rounds. So once we figure out that something is working, we pile in. What, what, um, what's your view on what um, seed investors can actually do to help companies? Like in other words, like I've, I'll just, my view is, is, is uh, they can help around sort of maybe some company building, introductions, uh, a lot around fi further financings, mm -hmm. But that maybe the idea that there, with maybe a few exceptions, um, uh, the the idea that they're going to be helpful on, let's say, the product side is probably over overrated. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what. You so, um, just because a good entrepreneur who's living and breathing, you know, his or her product, eighty hours a week. Yeah, it's very hard for an outsider to come in and say, you know, change, you know, and maybe even annoying to say, hey, make a Facebook widget or you know. So I think it's for me. So the way I think about it is. Um, startups are like, you know, uh, a house which is sort of being built and, you know, you have sort of uh, temporary sort of uh, sheet work here and you have sort of a lot of things which are not permanent. And the role of an investor is to make sure that the house which is being built is as solid as possible with that permanent stuff. And to me, there's no, there's no pride in, you can't have any pride when you're a seed investor because you, you need to be ready to help in anything you can. And so if you look at the span of things we, um, we do, so... I'm actually a product guy myself because it's mm -hmm. what I did in the past. And in certain cases, uh, we actually help the companies, not telling them what to do because you would never do that, but just give them a perspective of mm -hmm. what we've seen, uh, we've seen work, especially with all those, uh, you know, social sharing yeah. and variety. So part of it is just the so fact so that forth. you have access to this sort of a panoramic view of the market, you know, what that press, press practices are working in other companies. Yeah. And you 112 yeah. investments teach you a lot about the yeah. mistakes you've made. And yeah. so you want to try and share that. And, it's sort of trying, f what we do is pattern matching and pattern recognition. So when we see, hey, you're doing what this company tried to do like two years ago, speak to that guy to see why it didn't work and what you have to understand going down that path will sort of yield or here is how to avoid this issue. Yeah. So product, we actually help uh, quite a bit. Uh, my partner, Charles, is you know one of the foremost, foremost expert because he's a, you know, he's a CEO in the space uh, around uh, social gaming, mobile gaming, mobile user acquisition, mobile, uh, you know, mobile monetization. And so he can just share his own point of view that he's living through his own experience and he's lived through, you know, three gaming companies. Uh, so it's, uh, it's very valuable. Um, uh, Steph Palmieri, who joined us uh, from New York uh, back in, uh, in July, uh, is really a very good online marketer. And so she's essentially helping some early stage companies that don't have a dedicated marketing resource to figure out their own marketing programs. So there's a bunch of things where we're happy to help, but you're right. Overall, we're there to sort of give them sort of 
guidance, share our expertise, um, sometimes challenge them, uh, sometimes you know hug them to uh, because it's hard, and and make sure that we support them without being too overbearing, which I think is sort of the issue. You, you're not running the company, you're just supporting it. You give point of views, you don't give orders.